or you'll keep going and I'll put you unconscious. <laughs> I'm actually okay with either way. Here's, this is 2022. Back steps are stupid. And then just take your hips and open your hips up. And, are, are you flexible? Yeah, yeah, no, you're good. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I probably should have asked first. I wasn't ready. <laughs> okay. Guys, consent. <laughs> hey guys, what's up? This is Spencer. Do you like jujitsu? Do you find yourself struggling when it comes to passing uh, open guards like De La Hiva, reverse De La Hiva, single leg X, or sit up guard? If so, stick around because I have a treat for you. Alright. 
Okay, so we're, we're going to talk about a lot of passing today, and we're going to kind of naturally gravitate towards uh, like headquarters, which is going to lead into like body locks, float passes, uh, like a lot of pummeling stuff with your upper body, your lower body. So I, I just want to kind of get this out there. A lot of no gi passing, people try to treat it like they're in the gi. So you got to understand they're not the same. So like in the gi, if I get to the side of someone here, I have something I can grab and pull myself in. No gi, if I get to the side of the guy, he's just going to frame off me and kick his legs over most of the time. And if the mats are still slippery, you are uber fucked. You're not going to get it. Okay. So consistent no gi passing is not going to be jumping around the outside. It's going to be kind of going into the guy. Okay. And one thing you're going to want to look for is you're going to want to look for upper body attachments while you're trying to pass. Now, you actually end up getting the upper body attachments for no gi passing either before you do your pass to begin with or during the pass. Okay. So it's like, no matter where I am, if I get an upper body attachment, other than close guard, okay, don't ever, ever go in the close guard. But if I'm anywhere else, like let's say I get just an attachment, just say like a chin strap. Okay, most people go for the guillotine there. I don't want the guillotine most of the time because it's not actually as much control. The guys can still rotate. They can still kind of pull me around. But let's say I just got a, just a chin strap here. Now he has to kind of run away from me. He's not just going to come forward into this. This is too easy for me to keep him down. He starts framing on my knees. There's my underhook. But even if without the underhook, I can use just the chin strap to start out pummeling. Okay? Because that upper body attachment lets me keep my chest down after I did beat his legs. So it's, I, don't even, I don't even consider the chin strap one of the better like upper body attachments you can get, but that's enough. Okay. If you can put someone flat on the mat, even if he underhooks me, you know what I mean? Like he underhooks me on this side, if I put his hips on the other side, that underhook is now my attachment to him. I can do the same thing. I can actually just start like beating his legs because he's flat, he can't go anywhere. And this would be enough for me to finish the pass afterwards and hold him down. So, no gi passing is a lot about getting those upper body attachments and then beating the frames. Okay, beating his legs, getting down, and actually keeping him flat afterwards. So, we're going to talk about a lot about a lot of them. Guys, I just had a stroke. <laughs> it was way too early to have a stroke. <laughs> okay. All right, we're going to talk about a lot of that. Okay, and then we're going to kind of move down to getting them in headquarters. First thing I want to talk about um, in terms of like how I actually approach someone who's sitting up. Okay, if you're if you're approaching someone sitting up and you're just standing up tall, they're going to blast W. Like that's the only time I think it's okay for someone to go forward like that with their body off their back. He could. Well, I, I know someone's got wrestling shoes on. Yeah, you, could, you could probably double leg me like if I'm standing up like this. Even if I underhooked you, I wouldn't be able to put you down. Okay? So you have to actually get in a wrestling, defend my knee line, defend my hip line with underhooks. Okay? And if I'm standing up straight, I can't put my hips in there. So like if he reached up and grabbed my leg when I'm standing up tall, he can pull me forward. He can put me down in the direction he wants me to go. Whereas now, if I'm in a stance and he grabs it, I can direct my force down and put him into the side I want so that he can't use that attachment. Okay. So I start to evaluate kind of how the guy is uh, sitting up. Okay. Because there's a lot of different ways people sit. Uh, sometimes they have their underhooks really easily open. Not quite like that. Okay. But yeah, just something like him having his elbows on the outside of his knees would be enough. You know, guys that kind of sit, they sit like this almost. I blast through these kind of guys because that's just too much space. If I get that underhook, I'm going through. Okay. Whereas if he closes that underhook off, now I got to think about just kind of instepping and putting him down, or I look and see how his head's positioned. You know, because if he has no underhooks but his head is forward, I'm going to get the chin strap, and then that's my upper body attachment. So that's actually going to be the first thing we're going to do is uh, we're going to get the chin strap, okay, and then we're going to use it to dig an underhook, and then from that underhook, I can put him down to headquarters and pass, or I can just kind of start to knee slice him right now, okay? So, I see that, uh, you see how he's kind of leaning forward just a little bit, okay? His head's kind of curved down just a little bit. That would be enough for me to start looking to kind of club his head, not like a, like a big club, but just imagine like you're in a stance and you're always hand fighting the whole time, by the way, okay? Um, there's no point to me hand fighting from way out here because if I win the hand fight, I can't do anything with it. The worst thing I can do is let him get attached to me first and then pull me into something. So it's kind of like defensive hand fighting, where like if I got control of his hands, I just know that that's a period of time he can't really attach to me how he wants, and that lets me just get closer. Okay. 
thing is now I'm close enough that I can get off his hands and actually get on his head and then do something with it. Because if I'm way out here and I get on his head, there's nothing I can do with it. It's a waste of my time. And it's also just kind of opening me to attacks from him. So we're in our stance, okay? I'm aggressive as fuck about my hand fighting though. So like, I'm not just slapping your hands away. I'm like aggressively trying to get my hands on the back of your hands just so I can make sure I can deflect them away. Um, it's not so much about just kind of grabbing them as it is about just kind of keeping some pressure. Okay, like, because now when he tries to move his hands out of the way, it's really easy for me to react to the little like fast twitch motions he does. Reacting visually is really bad because it's just too slow, but you can feel which way he's gonna move and just use that time where you're just not getting grabbed to get closer. Okay, now I can start thinking about getting on his head. Okay. And I like passing people that are sitting up. I think it's one of the easiest places to pass them because of how easy it is to get those upper body attachments. His upper body is actually closer to me right now. Whereas if he's on his back, I have to fuck with his legs before I can even get to his upper body. Okay, so the only problem is when he's sitting up, like that's when he has good offensive entries. So it's high risk, high reward. So we're here. Okay, I can just get close enough that I can kind of come on down the back of his head and I'm only gonna push down just so I can get my chest over top of him here. Okay. Right away, I'm actually going to grab his chin. I'm not going to go for the guillotine. Because what this gives me now is something that prevents him from just going straight backwards. Okay, it's hard for him to actually get his chest away from me. So he can think about falling to his side, okay, which I can kind of control which way he goes a little bit. But what this really gives me is a kind of a cross pressure. Okay, because I have something that I can pull back into me with. Okay, and plus my chest is blocking the back of his neck. It means I can aggressively dig my underhook on his side. Okay. So it's going to be one, two, okay. And now at this point, unless he just takes his arm all the way across his body like he's had a stroke, <laughs> okay, I'll just start digging my underhook here. And it's really easy to just take the point of your fingers and just get just a little bit on the inside. And then I can put a lot of power behind it because I have something bracing here. Okay. Now I can definitely control which way he goes. All right. I don't want to let him go towards the underhook side. That would be really bad for me. Okay, because I would have to post, and when I post, he would reap on the meat. Okay. Which it wouldn't be the end of the world. I could still beat his legs, but it's just kind of a waste of the initiative I have here. All right. So because I have this underhook and I have his chin, I can start to put him down towards the other side. And I'm just going to walk my knee line towards the mat. I don't care if he tries to attach to my shin. Okay. Um, if he does grab your leg in a situation like this, just don't put pressure back into the foot. Okay. What I mean is like, if I just let my foot go limp where he's hooking it, he can't really like fling me off him. But if I put pressure down and he lifts with his foot, now it moves my whole body. So if you want to get tricky, what you can do is put a little pressure down, and when he goes to fling it off, just let your foot go straight, and you'll clear the shin hook a lot of times like that. But for the most part, it's just really about, uh, just let your foot go limp, okay? And all I'm really working on doing, sorry, at this point, once I have the underhook too, I just keep the guillotine until he's on the mat, okay? Because uh, you gotta understand something about underhooks is that pressure from a distance doesn't keep it, okay? So like, keeping the underhook is about closing the distance off. Then the pressure matters. So if I just grab my underhook from here and just let go of his head, he has all this space to make space, okay? And then he can re -pummel. So once he hits the mat, He's got nowhere else to go, and I'm still close to him. I don't need the head anymore. The head is actually just compromising my, my, my balance. So I'll just let go. Now I can post. Now I can start putting pressure backwards with my knee if I need to, and I can clear his legs. Or, depending, like, if he got a really good clamp, I could take my time. I could start looking to club his head, and then I could start kicking his legs off. Okay? So, a lot of my knee slice stuff is not about just blasting through the guy. It's about getting into your knee slice position and then just pressuring his legs off. So, for here, okay, I'm looking to hand fight my way in. Right? And if I saw underhooks, I would definitely aggressively jump at them. Okay, so like if he was out like this, I would just start looking to get as close as I could. Upper body first. I have my attachment at that point. I don't care what happens. I can always direct 
into the side I want to go because I have this upper body to angle it. My knee gets on the mat, nothing matters at this point. If I kept my underhook, he has nowhere else to go and my knee's on the mat, you can only fuck up from here. You know what I mean? Like, this is, like if, if he got away for any reason, it is my fault. Because I can just two on one this if I need to at this point. He's not going anywhere. Right? I can put my hand on the mat and use my head to keep the underhook. Okay? And then I have as long as the time limit of the match, they just clear his legs. But I'll be clearing his legs into side control with an underhook and probably already having his head club. So that's something you can actually keep him down. <clears throat> so let's check this out. So I'm here, hand fighting my way in. The more aggressive he is with his hands, okay, the more likely I am to spend a little bit of extra time getting some kind of tracking going on before I just march at him. Okay. But this would be enough for me to start looking. Sorry. Mm -hmm. I'm going to I'm gonna do the clubbing a little bit. I'm just trying not to like slap you. Okay. Peace from Atos. I'm going to fucking slap you. <laughs> <laughs> right. Actually, guys, uh, when I was a blue belt and I was training in Orlando Sanchez's, he, he told me uh, to do this every single time I go out there, any match ever. He said that he would just go out there and the first thing he'd do is just fucking club everyone as hard as he could just to show them what's up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're like 400 pounds, right? You know, and I was like 170 at the time. Like, they're just gonna fucking... Anyways, <laughs> so we're here, walking our way in. This head club is just to get to here. Okay. I wouldn't want to... Like, if he was postured up really well, I'm not gonna look for his head anymore. Okay? Because now it makes more sense for me to start in-stepping him and putting him backwards. You can just see you guys kind of see like the decision tree going on. Most people are leaning forward though. So this is a consistent thing you can just go for. Okay. One, now I just got to hold his chin. Uh, he'll give you this, if you sat here and waited just half a second, okay, they'll fuck up and just open. Because if they don't, you, <laughs> you could just start putting some guillotine pressure. And then pretty much everything he does to hand fight you at that point makes getting the underhook easy. Well, what I really like about this is he doesn't have to fuck up more because he could keep that as tight as he wants. I can dig that underhook no matter what because of that brace pressure I have. Now I just make sure my knee gets on the mat. Okay, I can use that grip on his head to pull it a little more if I need to. I can use the underhook. I put all my weight on my knee so I'm stable. He can't roll me. Now, there are times I will keep the guillotine and then I'll clear his legs kind of using the guillotine to make him want to open. But for me, it's more important to get the pass. Now, if you did keep it though, it's really easy to go from side control, especially because we still have this underhook. He has no way to really block my leg from kind of windshield wiping over and pressuring backwards to mount. And now, this is about the only place I really like to finish guillotines, because what the fuck is he gonna do? Okay. Like, you can attach your hips, and you get so much, like, arch pressure from here. So, I will finish the guillotine from out, but if I had to choose between the guillotine or the pass, I'm always going to pick the pass. <coughs> so, okay. So, here. So, well, my knee's close enough to the mat, I can just start to push down. Now I'm good. I feel pretty balanced, so I can just put... If you need more balance, you can put your head in the mat. That's no big deal. Uh, if, if you're going to do it, though, do it ahead of time. Okay? Because if I stay up like this, and I'm off balance, he tries to roll me. I mean, I'm going to win still, but it's going to hurt. You know what I mean? Like, I've eaten some fucking brutal head spikes into the mat to get the pass. Uh, but if I had just put my head down earlier, that wouldn't happen. Okay. Hmm. So, questions? All right. Uh, go ahead and grab partners. I don't have a clock or anything like that, so just switch whenever. Do it five times, 20 times in a row, I don't care. Yeah. The slow one, you Boy. give her the power. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, it's supposed to be like, come here and side control me. So it's like, here, if I just tried to bridge up into him, I don't actually really make space between me and him, and I didn't do an effective job of moving. Yeah, man. So what you should do is like get your frames solidified. Now, huh. see how much he moved and how much space I actually made? Like, I upward hit him in the chest right now, he went, <laughs> so. That's interesting.
if I do, but hey, yeah, that's an option. Right? The more space I leave, that would be what I would do. Yeah, I would put a butterfly hook back in. I would, I would switch back and put the butterfly hook in. I wouldn't accept someone being on the inside of my frame like this as the guy on bottom. Okay? But the problem is, as a guard passer, if I step to the middle, he can easily go reverse De La Hiva. He can go underneath. Okay? And against someone good, they don't go reverse De La Hiva and then spin under you. The process of putting reverse De La Hiva in is them spinning under you. So there's no disconnect. You know, entering the guard is entering the sweep. Um, that's my DVD's next name. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck off, Dan. <laughs> so, but the problem is that that's really, like, it's really dangerous for me. Uh, I actually take reverse steel Hiva very seriously uh, as, a, as a guard. Like, it's a guard that I play, and I think it has better offensive options than it has, like, stuff I have to worry about in terms of getting past. So it doesn't make sense for me to play into that ever. Okay, if I think it's a better guard than it is a guard for me to pass, don't fucking go there. So I don't ever give them the option to play to that side, and I don't give them the option to play like knee shields on this side or anything that has to do with me being cross the stepped. Okay, because I just think his offensive options are too good, no gi. And the things you would rely on generally to keep him pinned down in the gi, you don't have anymore. So I don't go there, I don't even give him the option. I want to limit as many options for him as I can while giving myself as many passing options as possible. So I'm going to try to put him into headquarters next. Okay. Now the other reason I don't step to the middle at all is because not only can he spin under me, but because there's so much space between me and his hips, he can get on, He can just start coming forward. He can get his hips out behind me really quickly. Okay. And even if I got an underhook, if his hips got out under him like that, I've got a problem. Okay. Now, so what that means is when I step in, even if I look like I'm stepping to the middle, I always open my shin up. Not my knee itself but my shin into his knee, okay? And now at this point, we, we'll play the game of what the fuck are you gonna do next? Because if he were to grab my leg at this point, that's my underhook, okay? If he tried to spin under me that way, I would put my knees down onto this side and make sure his hips went that way. Like, okay, honestly, that's what we're gonna do next, regardless. So you don't really have to pause, but generally, like I said, if I step in, most people just look at my leg and get confused and grab it. Even, like, even if you knee slice them a hundred times, doing the same exact thing, they'll do it again. I know. I don't know why, they just will. But let's say he got way ahead of me and got the knee, okay? My next reaction has to be put his hips on into the pocket. Because if I even go remotely this way, he's out. Okay? So when we step in, put your shin out. Like even there, I took the time to step my foot out a little bit and get connected to his knee. And I'm just looking to get my knee down onto the mat and put his hips onto this side. And now we're in headquarters, okay? This was me going into headquarters with him having my knee, which is actually uh, really fucking good for me because that means there's an underhook available, like, a, like an easy underhook available. Because I, I'm actually sitting right now with my yeah. fat ass thighs on his arm and he can't get it back. Can you get it back at all? Yeah, that took effort though. And that whole time I'm gonna be digging my underhook. So, if he grabs your leg first and you put him down into the pocket, okay, make sure you don't get just get immediately lifted off balance. That would be a problem. Okay. So when I'm coming down, I'm making sure like I'm putting a lot of weight on my knee. And you can see I'm kind of positioning my hips so if he started to lift me, I could bring my upper body forward and that wouldn't be that wouldn't be a problem at all. If you connect to me here, this is really good for me. Because this gives me my overhook. Okay. Or uh, you guys know when you mount someone, you guys do a lot of MMA, so you, you mount someone and the first thing they do is reach up and grab you and just kind of hug you down. It's like, yeah, I can't punch you. But can you actually escape mount like this? No. For him to get out of headquarters or to do anything offensive whatsoever, like he has to be thinking about getting me off of it. Okay, because there's no way for him to really win the leg pummeling battle at this point. So I, I just don't care if they under him. So um, really this is just going to be a battle of like weight distribution for just a second. Because if he tried to lift me, I can post my hands in the mat, and if whenever I want this underhook, I'm just gonna move my knee to the inside and make the pocket open up again. So I would wait for any time I'm stable, or if I really had him stable, I had him flat, he's not able to lift me. A lot of people don't have good uh, butterfly hooks, so they can't lift you, okay? You just keep him flat whenever you want, have your hand ready to go, okay, like wait to get it a little tighter. Like there, there's no underhook option. Now it's my underhook. Now we're back in our knee sucks. 
Okay? So you're just kind of looking to line it up and then make that space. If he didn't grab my leg on the instep and I didn't see underhook options or anything like that, I'm just going to make sure, again, I'm not standing straight up. My hips lead. I just push his hips down to that side. And using my knee pressure, using my hip pressure. And you see my hands are just floating out. I just want to land in a position where I can try to hold him down here. Okay. And then, again, if he was on my leg at all, you guys got to understand, if someone's grabbing your leg, gi or no gi, if they're not grabbing your pants in the gi, okay, it's just no gi, they're giving you an underhook. Because there's always going to be some kind of bend in their arm where you could dig that. And if you can dig that underhook, you can put your knee size. Okay. And knee sizes are great for no gi because you can actually finish it. It's not just going to be knee slices today. There's just so many options we can do them from, so I'm just kind of pointing them out. So, in step, big in steps. Make sure you get here. He's connecting really aggressively, so the first thing I'm going to do is take his pressure back, get his hips out from under him, and then I'm just going to surf. Okay? The more he lifts me here, but doesn't actually off balance me, uh, this is going to play into uh, later on really easy passes. Because the more he lifts, the easier it is to front pummel. Now he's dead. Okay, or I can do my normal back pummel stuff. If I get to the inside of his hips like this, he's already passed. A lot of people just don't realize it yet. He can keep trying to pull my leg all day. I'm in side control. So this, that's what I'm talking about. Like you can always out windshield wiper people. And I'm gonna go into that in a lot more depth. I'm just trying to point it out. Right now, I just want everyone to kind of get into headquarters. Here, put them down. If they let you on the inside of your, their knee like this, you just drop chest to chest, okay? But for the most part, if they put it across like that, you just fold and pass it, okay? Headquarters is fucked because pretty much everything he does that's not just like aggressively hit me off him leads into a pass. Most people, if they survive more than like the initial, like getting into headquarters, it's because they're keeping a really, really good frame, okay? If they push you away like that, no, no, it's actually good for me because I can collapse it down. So, just hold still for a second. I want to mm -hmm. explain how to hold headquarters for a second. Okay. You want to have, like, positive pressure first. Okay, like, if I just stay postured up like this, and he pushes me, he'll make my body lean back. It'll take the weight off my knee. And what he needs to do to get out of headquarters right now is actually get this bottom leg back. So, go ahead, just, like, push me back and then rotate your leg in. Like, now he's out. I can try to put him back into it, which I will try to do. I won't play on the other side no matter what, okay? But I just can't play upright like this. Headquarters is a position that requires you to be comfortable just going into people, okay? So I want my knee to have a decent amount of pressure on it, okay? This knee, if I can ideally get it on the mat, that's even better. And now it can be on the mat close to his body, which means I'm gonna put a lot of outward pressure with my foot, so there's gonna be like a, like, rotational, pressure going on on this other side, okay? And I'm trying to rotate my foot out into his shin, okay? If I could actually get under it like that, that's great. But really, it's just that pressure that gives me enough friction to kind of pull myself down and stay attached and keep this side kind of trapped, okay? okay. The weight, it's not all of my weight because I need to have enough weight to not just get pushed off him or lifted up into the air. Even though I could counter it after he did, I'm just, it's just the fact that I'm making so much space that makes it a problem. So I want to kind of like learn how to switch my weight between blocking this knee a little better when he's really trying to get it back and sinking on this butterfly hook so he can't just easily lift me. Pushing my chest and my stomach forward like I'm trying to fold his knee into his shoulder. That way he can't just push me backwards. And so this is going to be most of our pressure. We're just going to be smashing it at every single place. The more he lifts, with his foot, the more I drop my hips. Okay. The more he tries to push me away, the more I go over the top and look to just collapse this. Okay. It's really hard for me to just push straight into his knee like this. If you're having trouble collapsing this, just go over top, collapse it here. Your hands can be on him, you can put your hands on the mat. You can even put your hands on the mat over his head and you just gotta have good backwards pressure so you don't just get flipped off. And now, pretty much anywhere he tries to put his hand on, Get a push. That's where you're just going to immediately dig an underhook. So, like, if he tried to push my knee here, that's my underhook. Okay, and that underhook is going to immediately lead 
and do a knee slice. <laughs> okay, knee slices, I swear to God, it's not all going to be knee slices. There's just so many options for them. So here, I'm making sure I don't get lifted. I, I really have two primary goals. I'm either trying to get to the inside of his knee and get down chest to chest, or I'm trying to get to the outside of his knee and then fold it across. So we can take easy passes right away if they do weird shit like just put their knee across. But you see, he can't stop me from just collapsing on it right now. Okay. Like he could have the strongest hips in the world, but I eat a lot of Panda Express. I'll be able to fold him across. Okay. And then again, if he's over committing to this frame where it's going to the outside, you just come down chest to chest. And now at this point, I can just connect anywhere and we'll talk about passes still from here, but just so you guys can kind of see where this goes. I can dig body locks no matter what's going on. If he underhooked me, I could still body lock him. And now I could just always work on beating his frames, either with pressure or with windshield wipering. So it doesn't, like he doesn't have enough pressure with one hook to get me off him when I'm so connected to him, I'm so flat. Okay. So the guy's sitting up, we instep. If we don't get an underhook instantly, I make sure my hips are low enough that my knees can go forward. Just get him down on the mat. See, the first thing he's doing with his frame is leaving it open. First thing I would do is just fucking flop on him. Now he just can't. He can try to lift me. Even if, let's say hypothetically, he was strong enough to lift me over his head with one butterfly hook. It's going to lead into a pass, though. Okay, this is an easy pass because I can keep him folded with the chin strap. He can't turn either way. He can't bridge back up over his head. Not if he likes his neck. <laughs> okay? And then I can dig my underhook and bridge back over top of him. But that happened because I beat his frame. Okay? One butterfly hook is not a problem. That's why headquarters is the best. <laughs> okay? So, just a real quick recap on holding it when we get down. Okay? I want to have lots of weight distributed between both my sides. Okay, but whatever side he's trying to put more emphasis on escaping on, I'll put more pressure and more weight. So if he's really trying to push my knee backwards, not only will I aggressively start digging those underhooks so he can't, okay, but I'll put more weight on my knee. My knee wants to be pinching in most of the time. It could post out for a little bit though when I need stability. And when I'm going to pinch in, it's so that my foot can kind of like rotate out with more pressure here. It doesn't have to go under his leg. But a lot of times, they'll try to rotate their feet under your hip, or they'll just lift their leg off the ground, or for some reason, there's space. Okay, like a lot of times, like they'll be on their toes or something. And then if I can get my shin underneath his leg at all, it just gives me a lot more hook pressure to stay stable. Okay. Here, I'm trying to either slip to the outside and collapse it, or I'm trying to slip to the inside and just get down chest to chest. If neither of those options are there right away, my primary pressure is just going to be going in and over top of him here. Okay? If he tried to lift with his feet right now, I sink my weight down into my hips, and I'm okay. Okay? If he tries to push me away with his knee, I push back into him. Okay, I can come up off the ground, I put more weight on my knee. But if I ever really need to collapse him, I go over top of him and just come down. Okay? And then you can practice from this position. Anytime he puts his hands on you, you dig an underhook. If he puts both hands on me, I always dig the top side. Okay. I want the, the bottom side is the side he lifts me towards. I don't want that one to be the side I compromise if I have both options. Okay, so if he puts both hands and just push me away, I can pop them off or I can dig this. You can't do this in the gi, by the way, because what will happen is he'll reach out and grab me, and you can't fumble through that. But if he's just putting his hands on me and push me away, you can always actually out-pummel people no gi. Especially as the top guy, because I can let my pressure off a little bit, so his hands are now just kind of floating there. And that's when I can make space and dive on that underhook. Alright? So, what I'm going to have you guys do, I'm going to have you guys partner off. And we'll spend a little extra time on this. I want you guys to kind of practice holding headquarters a little bit. I'll be walking around and kind of fixing stuff. But you're going to instep and put him down. And now he's going to give me, like, very little minimum resistance. Okay? Basically, he's going to tailor it to how good I am at holding headquarters, and he's never going to just shove me off him right away. Okay, this is kind of a training thing in general. If I, uh, if, like, I should be working on my pressure right now. I'm kind of reacting to where he's trying to get out. But let's say he's just stronger than fuck, and he just pushes me off instantly. 
that didn't give me time to learn where to push in. Okay. So what I should have done is been pushing before he pushed me, but he did it so hard I didn't get a chance to kind of match it. Okay. So if he gave me 5% push instead, okay, that reminded me to push in then. Okay. If he lifts me a little bit, well, that reminds me to sink my hips and push. See what I mean? So then he just kind of ramps this up so that way you can learn how to hold it. And then we'll start doing passes from there. Okay. So for now, you're working your way to the inside of the frame or the outside of the frame. We're not doing full passes yet. And then the guy on the bottom is just kind of tailoring up his resistance. So you're going to go all the way into it, and then you say go. Questions? All right, very partners. I'm going to hyper address what happens when you get lifted and how to counter that first. I was going to go into the folding pass first, but uh, honestly, if you understand that it doesn't matter if they lift you, and you understand that them lifting you and them pushing away with their knees is just giving you a pass, it's a lot easier to play the position. Okay. So if I'm down here, okay, whether I have underhooks or not, all right, when you get lifted, go ahead and lift me up. You gotta understand, he's actually taking his frame and moving it away from his chest. So his frame itself is getting a lot weaker, okay? So if they're lifting you, I want you to just take your hips and direct your hips down into a sprawl, okay? This would be the easy one. So like if I felt him start to lift me, I would just send my hips out and full sprawl onto the side of his knee and I would just make sure that I keep my foot retracted. I don't want to let this foot be on the mat because he's actually going to catch a saddle here. Okay, and I could still win this position, but I would have to sit him up and body lock him. And if he's already started inverting underneath me, that's a problem. So it's, it's something that he could theoretically be ahead of me on, so I'm not going to even fuck with it. Okay, but if I keep my foot retracted up, or ideally, I usually try to get it actually on top of his top leg like this, I'm out. There's nothing for him to catch and he can't open his frame back up in it. I can put all of my weight wherever I need it to go on my hips by just arching my back and pushing my hips forward. Okay? Yeah, like you're, you're pretty strong. And e even like the, even the Atos guys, <laughs> <laughs> they're gonna struggle lifting you from here, all right? And then this is gonna lead into our folding pass too at the same time. So I'll actually talk about that here. Okay, if, if his frame is even slightly turned, Okay, that would be way too much for him. He's, he's going to get collapsed. Okay? I'm just going to full send not just my hips, but my upper body towards it. Okay? Because right now, if I put all my weight on my hips, it's going to push into his foot. And that's not going to collapse his hips very well. So what you've got to do is you've actually got to drive off this outside leg like you're jumping in this direction. Okay? And as soon as I get my force going this way, I turn my chest, my weight goes on my chest, and I collapse down. Right? Same thing, if he was pushing me away this way, it'd be the same thing. I'm just going to full send in that direction with the weight of my chest, here. Okay. Now here, I always post my foot out here. I don't want to end up in headquarters at this point. Like there's no point holding it when I actually get out over top of this. My upper body just connects to his uh, hip area and it wouldn't matter to me if he dug an underhook. It's actually super easy to just step over to uh, like to, to S mount basically. Or you can roll in the omoplatas and shit. But you don't have to do that. Anytime they're attached to me from these kind of positions, I can always take my other hand, club the back of his neck, tilt him up, and then take my arm under and body lock him over his overhook. Okay. This is plenty of pressure to squeeze on now. Okay, so like his underhook is only dangerous if it can really move me over his head. But once I'm connected under his body, especially if I brace off his neck, there's no way he's going to move it. So I'm not worried about it. And honestly, even if I didn't do that, if he has the underhook, I can just keep my pressure down because I'm only worried about my hips here. Even if he pulled my upper body way forward, if my hips stayed behind on this other side where my knee is, he can't turn back into me. So he's not going to get anything going. He can't rotate his hips back into me either because I've still got pressure on the outside. So I just don't care about this. Okay? 
but that almost never happens. You almost always end up with just a good connection to his hips because of how you were in headquarters. It's like they're doing whatever with their hands. If he was posting on me, I'd always be digging to the inside of me this. But he, even if he was just here, because I scrape up his thigh, I always end up connected with no one about me. Okay. And the beauty of this, oh shit. You good? <laughs> okay? Yeah. No, it, his shorts got pinned and ripped a little bit. I was, I've never had that happen like that. But when you land here, okay, because I'm connected to his hips, this could lead up into my underhook if I wanted. The thing is, most of the time I don't. Okay? I'd rather have a connection to someone's hips than their shoulders. Because I can actually like beat his frame, not windshield wiper him, and get around him a lot easier, and I can hold him down a lot easier than I can by connecting to his upper body. So, it... If you could choose between an underhook or a body lock, you would be better off with a body lock most of the time. Okay, if I talk at them, can you guys hear me? <laughs> okay. Yeah, I didn't know if I had to like, turn and repeat it. But, okay. So, you guys see him, basically no matter what, if he's pushing me or lifting me, I can almost just always pull symptoms. It's really hard for someone to reactively stop me where they need to. He would need to stop all my pressure right now. Okay. Because once it collapses here, this is like he, he, if he try to catch me here, I'll just drop all of my weight on him. He won't be able to catch that for sure. So they have to be really, really good in their frames. So their margin for error is tiny, and just most even the good guys don't have enough reaction time to keep that. Normal. So if he lifts me, we collapse it. Okay. There's other options, but this is just the one I'm showing. Right? Okay. If he's just sitting here, or his frame is slightly to the inside, or maybe it's even in the middle. I can just smash it. I can just die that. And you notice, like, I get down as fast as possible. Yeah, I, I actually get my foot out also as fast as possible so I can put more weight on my chest even. Because keeping this down is important. Now I'm connected. I don't need to do anything with my body right now. Um, I just make sure my knee stays behind his knee line. Okay, it doesn't have to be, like, super tight. But just imagine it wasn't. He could rotate his knee line back out. Okay, so I'm just preventing that. So I just follow his knee line. Anywhere he tries to go, he passed himself. By trying to push me away or trying to turn into me too hard, because I'm behind his knee line, he has to completely straighten his leg to turn into me. Now this is dead. This is nothing. You can just step over. Okay? And that would be just taking an easy pass based on a mistake he made. Which most people do that. You know, like, uh, if you watch any videos of me going with Bird, Bird at least tries to get out, so most of the time I just kind of step through his guard like that. Okay. Guys that are just like really defensive and they just sit there, or they try to lift you the whole time, now, then we take a second and we beat him a little more technically. Okay. What I want to do is get something blocking this top leg. Okay. That's not just my hips. So I want to get my hips to the outside, I need to replace it with something. If he's got a really shitty frame and you're really secure here, you can actually take your hand and smash this down. Hey, let me turn you this way so people can actually see what's going on here. Yeah. So like if everything's just going perfect and you feel really stable, you can do this. And then I can windshield wiper myself to the outside. And once, once I'm behind him, like I, I'm inside control. Okay. But if his frame was a little tighter, yeah, something like this, I have to put a little more emphasis on keeping it down. Okay, or I have to hand fight him a little bit or grab his head. Whatever's going on, sometimes you just can't afford to take this hand to do this. All right? Now the next thing I'm going to look for is going to be getting my right foot windshield wiper on top of this. Okay? Now you see how the better he keeps his frame, it's just not there yet. So what I can do, I, I can always do this. Right? I can take my hips and really commit to smashing it down. Okay, so now I put it on the mat. Now I know where it is. It's still pretty far from my right leg, though. But my left leg, as long as I keep my knee where it is, behind him somewhere, I put that leg on top first. Now I can afford to lift my hips up and move around a little bit because I'm not taking my, my weight off that frame. Okay? So my left leg will go up, and that will feed it to my right leg. Once my right leg's there, I can rotate my knee line behind his knee line, and now nothing is getting in the way. Because let's say he just uh, j just summoned 
You know those moms that their kids get trapped under the car and they just pick it up suddenly? Okay, it, he had a panic attack and lifted me still. I would just rotate off because I'm behind his hips, okay? That really the only thing he can do is commit to turtling. And if they do that while you're this close to them, just let them, seriously. Like, first off, you can stop them from doing it real easily just by bringing your head to the inside, okay? If he grabs your head to do anything, like that, you can just out-pressure this so easily. So I'm not worried about them committing to turtling. I'm always going to get on their back. But you just don't have to let them. If you don't want them to turtle, you can go right for the head. Or uh, you can commit to diving on the arm triangle right away. So he starts trying to turtle. In the gi, I would make that an Ezekiel. Okay. But if they do commit to turtling, for, seriously, just chase their back. I guess we're here and here. It's, it's, you guys see what I mean, though? So don't overthink this. The really important part is just getting something behind him. I really want to get my right leg behind his knee line. So if you want to force it, full send out. Okay, it could be here with your hips, or if my chest is on it, I'm connected with my chest. Okay, I'm looking for those windshield wipers. Right here you can see his foot is really flush. So that means I'm going to sprawl it down. Now I can get my left foot on top, feed it to my right foot, make sure my knee line comes up, and now we can just pass. And you really can just circle off. And then just so you guys see, there's a little, there's, there's a couple more options. If you feel like he doesn't have a ton of lifting pressure, you can slide up to the center hook and then knee slice over the top of his hips. Okay, I'll do that one sometimes, and then. If he tries to just like push you away with his knees when you're here, treat it like a leg weave and just start coming up to mount. Okay, and then bang. So, we're going to do the folding pass. If he lifts us, it's the same thing. Okay. As long as you don't let your upper body rotate. Okay, so if they lift you, just focus on staying square. You should spend some time in this position just learning how to float. I mean literally float. Like, yeah, go ahead and like lift me off. You see how my upper body and my hips stay pretty square? That's, that did not happen when I first started playing this position. Okay, but if they lift, we smash. And then because he didn't keep a good frame, I was able to bring my right leg into play first. That's what I would prefer, but that's only because he made a mistake. Okay, he was playing it better, he keeps his leg way tighter. Now I can't afford to do that. So now I just start doing this one. I can also, because he sat up, I can actually connect to that guillotine. And I can do all of the above. Okay? Question? All right. Uh, grab your partners. Last ones, we were going to the outside. Okay, this time we're going to force ourselves to the inside. Okay. Now, this is a lot easier to do than people realize. Um, you just have to understand how to keep consistently adding pressure. Okay. So, you got to, uh, listen, again, the worst thing you can do in headquarters is just stay postured up and have your weight being backwards like this. Because then if he tried to push into me, I really would lose it. I would have to post my hands or my weight would come off this leg. He would start to get his leg back and I still could recover. If you ever start to lose that bottom leg, just take your right hand and just cup it. Okay, so if he starts pulling that leg back out, I have to catch it and I have to be able to push it back underneath me. But again, that happened because I was leaning backwards. I should be leaning forwards this whole time. Okay, now again, if I could get to the outside of his frame and collapse it, that's what I would do. But people can keep really, really good frames. Like, you'll, you'll almost never catch me with my frame being collapsible. You know, once you get to a high level, unless you catch them fucking up, Okay, people have much better frame awareness. But you can force yourself to the inside relatively easily. Okay, because A, if I smash in enough, my pressure will slip in. Okay, so if, say, in a hypothetical world, he didn't push me off him with his hand so I didn't get underhooks, okay, he just kept, stayed defensive. And this is something people do in this position.
okay? I can just keep driving my chest and my stomach and my hips into this uh, knee shield until I get over top of it. And then I don't just float here, I keep smashing in, okay? So it's like I arch my back so I'm taking weight off of my neck, but it doesn't need to be there. I want that weight to be on my stomach right now, okay? And then I can force myself just like slightly to the inside. Just think about just like slightly turning and adjusting. That little rotation right there, and then go back to putting your pressure straight down will let you slip down, okay? And then I just make sure I don't stop like this. This is a bad habit people have. They want to hold themselves off of someone. If I get to the inside of his knee from anywhere, I really just fully collapse. I take your hands off the mat, grab him, but think about just getting down as low as possible. It makes it so much harder for him to get away. Okay? But I say you, you can force yourself in with just pressure, but you can also force yourself in because the guy fucks up, and right now his knee is a little too far to the outside of my chest. I could just hit it and drop. I could push it. I could push it and drop. Okay? Uh, this one's... You'll never get called for hitting this at 100. If you punch it, they might look at you funny. But you can actually, like, I can't imagine a ref in the world, like, getting mad at you for doing that. Because it's like, it's his knee. There's nothing, it's not like you pushed him in the stomach, you know. Don't do that. Okay. But something that helps, okay, if the guy has such a solid frame pushing into you, you're matching his pressure here, and I hit it, it's not going to move. Okay, let me in a little more. Now, imagine he's pushing into me and I let my pressure retract a little bit. Either because I slip to the inside really quickly or I like disconnect for a second. That disconnect gives me just enough space that when he goes, see, it's like solid pressure when it's stable is hard to move, okay? But I can redirect pressure that has like air gap, okay? So like that little bit of pressure there, that would be enough for me to move. I can go from pressure let my pressure up just barely, just like a centimeter would be enough. And then I can push myself back to the inside as I move it. Once I'm on the inside, he's gonna go crazy and you're just gonna drop. If you could drop and dig your underhooks at the same time because you can keep up mentally, do that. If that would be better. It just, again, to me, it doesn't matter. Because if I land and he gets both underhooks, guess who just attached to me, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, he's not gonna lift me, I can just pull, I can pull my elbows back into his overhook. You can keep it how you are. But like he can put as much pressure there as he wants. It just lets me pull my hips into his butterfly hook. Okay? So upper body attachments should make your hips get really, really powerful. So like once I do get to the inside, however that happens, if I dig my underhook anywhere, okay, or if I grabbed his head, whatever's going on, even if I just pinch my elbows around the outside of him or I just grab his shoulders, I should be using that to push my hips into his butterfly hook and actually into his foot, like into his toes if I can, okay? When it comes to butterfly hooks, or when it comes to like uh, hooks in general, if you're pushing into someone's shin, they can push back, okay? But if you're pushing into their toes, they can't do shit. Okay? It'd be the same thing, like, there's a lot of positions where people have a bad habit of staying on the shin, like if something like if you're in this kind of knee shield, if, now, he could push into me right now, he can move me. If I slid down and actually grabbed his toes themselves, or I turn my hand over and grab him, he's not pushing into that. There's no pressure there. Like the, the, the pressure difference between this and being on his toes was monstrous. Okay, here I can keep that motherfucker like that's folded. That's okay. So really kind of aim for their toes. It's the same thing when you're pushing your hips into a butterfly hook. So like once I do get down, okay, I I want to make sure I don't give him any space between his heel and his hips because like one inch of space, he gets a lot more power behind his lift. But it's not just about pushing in, you gotta push down also. And what helps is I'm pulling myself down. So you have to understand how to like connect from your shoulders all the way to your hips. But it's not just my hips, because it's gonna be whatever is attached to that butterfly hook. Sometimes it's on my hips themselves. So it's like more towards the inside a little bit, and I'm gonna take my whatever I have and really put the pressure on that. Sometimes he's more on my thigh, in which case, I have to understand I've got to take the point where he's connected to and that's what I have to pull in. Okay? See, there's a big difference. One was my hips, one was my thigh. Okay? It's really just whatever is connected. So whether we pressure in, slip and come in, or I pressure in, sink, hit it out to the side. Okay? I want to get underhooks. When you get down, there's a ton of times you can, you can actually spend a second to pummel from here. 
especially if you're like down towards his hips like this. If I'm, again, if I'm gonna get an underhook, I want the top side underhook, it's a lot safer, okay? But I'm gonna connect now, and I'm really gonna pull myself in, okay? And this is gonna be our stable position. You should be able to sit here and pin someone for basically ever, okay? He's about to make a big mistake. You see how he's wanting to put his foot to the outside now? That's an automatic win for me, because that's the pass I'm actually about to show. <laughs> okay, seriously. Uh, because whether or not he wants it to go there, like if he's trying to make it go there, just let him. And then just take your hips and open your hips up. And, are, are you flexible? Yeah, yeah, no, you're good. You're okay. Right. <laughs> I probably should have asked first. I wasn't ready. <laughs> okay, <laughs> guys, consent. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I'm going to open his hips up. So imagine he's trying to close half guard right now on my left leg. Okay. I can easily keep him from doing that just with my hips and just putting a little bit of my shin pressure out this way. Okay. But you can't be lazy. If I put no pressure, he could actually close it. Okay? So you have to counter pressure this. So whether it means shelving your foot up here and leaning on it, or if you have your foot on the mat, pressure your hips forward. Move everything forward so we can. Go ahead, close it again. You see I me? Mean? Like I didn't need to shelf it. I just needed to understand how to pull and pressure against this side and this side. Because now at this point, to get out to side control, all I've got to do is take my foot and windshield wiper it, preferably towards the top of his other thigh. Okay, and once my foot goes over it, I can take my other foot off, I don't need it anymore. And normally I try to do a really quick transition. So there's a ton of times where I land and like immediately windshield wiper out. I get down, I hit the mat, whether it's from pressure or him slipping, and I just instantly windshield wiper out. They don't notice I did it a lot of times. So then they try to catch my kneecap. Okay, this, this is the fucking best thing in Jiu Jitsu because you know what he's not doing? He's shrimping or bridging or trying to get up. Okay, and he doesn't have anything. At this point, if I want to just make him feel really silly, I just straighten my leg. Okay, so I would rather him catch my kneecap than not though because like imagine he's like a D1 wrestler. Just like, you know those scrambly fucks that are just impossible to hold down? He catches my knees not doing that. Okay, so I want him to please catch it. Now, th that windshield wiper, uh, that might be a little harder if you don't have good dexterity, you don't haven't done a lot of windshield wipering. Just kind of think, uh, anywhere on his thigh is good, but the lower it is, the worse it is. So if your windshield wiper is down by his kneecap or it's underneath this foot, it's not going to be as good a control, okay? You'll have to, like, when you get out, you'll have to make sure your knee blocks his, his hip line instead of just having your knee already be there because your foot's blocking it. You kind of see what I mean? Because if, if my pressure slips, he's just going to get a knee shield back in. So, however we get to the inside, whether it's aggressive or whether it's more pressure based, okay, I drop chest to chest. No matter what's going on, okay, he could underhook me or overhook me. I want to look for good attachments. This is something I pretty much always do. I put my left hand on the mat, even if it was an underhook. Okay, because I'm too close for him to really re pummel. I'm not worried about it. I grab his neck and I push off the mat and I sit him up. When I sit him up, I have a ton of space to actually just body lock him, take that arm all the way across and I can keep him flat with my other arm. Now I have really good squeeze pressure. Okay, so this just makes it worse. Um, imagine he's trying to lift me up right now. Okay, you can pull your hips down and stop him. Even if you didn't like smash his shin in enough to not be liftable, if he lifted right now, I could just clear his foot because I have so much downward pressure because of the body lock. But if I didn't have the body lock, that would not be as good of an option. And then once we get on the inside, okay, and now I get my upper body attachment and how I want it, now I think about passing. Now the two ways to get to the inside that I like, well there's three, there's really three ways. One is just like put your pressure down and then make him think he can go to the outside and catch it. Okay, but that's him fucking up. Two. I can pull so much pressure down that I can actually sprawl backwards like this and then I can open up and just make sure you hide your foot a little bit, okay? So you shelf it or you hide your foot and just pinch pressure and then I can wish your wiper out. Now the third way is to, it's a little riskier 
if you don't understand how to keep your pressure, but it's the easiest one to force, okay? I can just bring my shin on top to a shin hook. I can windshield wiper on top, and I can flick my knee to the inside. Now my knee's on the inside, I've already shelved it. I can turn out. And then there's always like those worst case scenarios where you just feel off balance, and you can turn your knee slice out, as long as I have the underhook or I have the body lock. Sorry, squeezy. You consented though. <laughs> so, here, drop. I got the underhook on this one, so I can just immediately sit them up and body lock them. This, so I've shown this from like four positions now, okay? You can do this from a lot of places. It's something you really should add to your game. It's just going for the body lock instead. And then you can use that brace up against his neck to keep him from curling up into a ball or inverting or alleviating pressure. God, please do that. <laughs> <laughs> no, do that again. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> you can fucking... Yeah, uh, they don't do this normally. They, they normally know better, but yeah, you could just arm triangle. Okay. <laughs> but body lock, this is a pressure position. Everything is pressure. Squeeze. Use your upper body to pull your hips in. Now I'm on the inside, I open it so he can't close half guard. Foot's out. You guys see how I want to put my foot really high up on his thigh though? Try to do this. If you can't do it, spend a little bit of time trying to do it. You can put it lower. Lower is just not as good. All right, questions? Okay. Awesome. Go. Step back from the pressure passes now. Okay, I, I can hear the grunting and the, the faces. <laughs> okay. uh, there's just so much versatility in this position. I'm going to show you guys like two or three passes that I get, just right away, just easy passes. Okay. So here, here's a. They're going to have some related aspects to them, but they're different passes. All right. First off, if somebody is reaching for your head and you try to get on your neck. If he's on my head already, I'm always gonna get them off my head. Okay, I don't let anyone sit on my head like this because now his knee has pressure and now he can move me. Now the fun part about headquarters is that, I, I should have showed this earlier, but let's, even if he knocks me over, he okay, just, wait. yeah, knocks me over, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> it doesn't actually, he can't keep you down, okay? His only prayer would be to have my head and my, my arm but it's like, he has to basically put his arm down to get up, and every time he went to get up, I was able to pull my arm up. So, when it comes to a wrestle up, don't wrestle into him, wrestle away from him, first off. But he shouldn't be able to sweep you from here, even if you really just fuck everything up. Okay, and that may happen to him, but you should be okay. Now, the process of him reaching, that's when I should pass him, okay? So you should be hand fighting people, that too. That's the next one. They're the okay. same. No, no, seriously. You just keep giving me the perfect responses. <laughs> okay. People that reach with their arm or people that get on their elbow. I should pass to the outside of his frame right now. Okay. Because when people sit up and when people reach, they forget about their frame. Their frame it either loses most of its pressure or he won't be able to follow me as soon as I go towards the outside. Okay, so you may have some pressure, but in the process, let me go back. If you reach and push me away, that would be really confusing. <laughs> uh, so here, when he reaches, you can slip to the outside, like right now. Okay? It'd be the same thing. If he got up on his elbow and I'm over top of him, there's no reason for me not to just slip this and get to the outside and just beat his hips. And then he can run, but I mean, I'm connected. Okay? Now, there's a, there's a couple of different ways to do this. And it really just depends on his body mechanics and his body size. Okay, so like, if his frame and butterfly hooks are really, really solid, I may back step and I may hip into his frame a little bit. So you may see me turn a little more. So when he reaches, you see how I turn my hips to kind of put some kind of pressure in there? Now, when I back step, I almost never actually back step. I say the word, 
But if you're, this is 2022. The back steps are stupid. <laughs> they are because I should have wish away. Okay, I can be ahead of a back step and I can clear, but I could also fuck up a back step and get caught in a butterfly hook and knocked off balance. You can, if you're back stepping, you should always be winch away. Okay, so your back steps should have your foot already up and connected, so it should be almost more like a pick. Because then there's just nothing for him to catch. He could lift with that, but what the fuck's that gonna do? You see me? So I'm just kind of preemptively winch weppering. Because if, let's say, I did a back step, okay, and I got caught here, the next thing I would do would be winch wrap around anyways. But he might have knocked me off balance in the process, and that would be bad. Okay? So just winch wrap around anyways. So anytime you're doing a back step, Remember, Wilty said you suck. <laughs> or just don't do it. Just windshield wiper all the time. Okay? Seriously, it's it, you can just pass people with only windshield wipers when you get good enough at them. Just take the time and get good enough at them. <coughs> now, when he's reaching, okay, especially if he's already compromising his frame a little bit, instead of sprawling on it, I just go into it. Okay, so if his frame's already a little compromised and he starts actually trying to sit up and grab me, I can just literally go forward chest to chest. And I can just kind of like X pass almost with a windshield wiper. To where if I got connected upper body wise, it wouldn't matter if I didn't clear his legs. Because, do I reach up again? I'm here. So he can, he can lift with that all he wants. He won't be able to knock me over. I'll be able to pull my hips down and pass him. Okay? But you do want to clear. If his frame is more in the middle, I'm, I'm going to probably hip switch a little bit. I'm going to like. Back. I'm going to say back step, but you know what I fucking mean. <laughs> okay. And I'm just going to worry about staying close to his upper body. If I could grab something because there was space, that'd be great. But I just have to connect to him. Okay? So when they reach, slip to the outside and just worry about getting your stomach in. Worry about getting your chest in and having something to drive with. Being on your toes and not like flat footed. Okay? And then he's going to panic. And, uh, if it's couch, he's going to cry and punch the mat and shit. But, that's not a joke. I mean, it's kind of a joke. But you just don't act like that, okay? So in, he reaches. If I miss it, I didn't react fast enough, I'm going to go for the next pass we're going to do. Okay, or I'm just going to get him off my head. And he reaches again. That time I was able to just go chest forward. So you see, it's, it's really just beat his frame here. You know, how I do it is going to vary a little bit depending on the pressures I get. So like people that have more pressure on their feet, like more lift pressure, I'm not going to go just forward on them. I'm going to back step on them. Okay, people who don't have a lot of frame pressure, or they, they maybe they have a lot of frame pressure with their knee, but not a lot with their butterfly hook. If I beat that a little bit, I can just like rake their thigh up into side control. Okay? So it's always going to be slightly different. But whether it's a back step, whether it's a, like a kip up almost, okay? or whether you just like dive at a body lock or an upper body. Use it when they reach or use it when they try to get up on their elbow. If you let them get up on their elbow and you don't punish them, that's a bad one. Because when people get up on their elbow, their frame naturally turns in. Because their upper body twists. So now his frame's turned. You see what I mean? That's like, I should have gone. I should punish him. I'm gonna do it now. <laughs> if you, the problem is like once he's up and stable, He's going to fight harder once you get down. If you catch them still coming up, you'll put them back down off the pass. So, I'm trying to catch all this stuff in the transition for him. Okay. Uh, questions? All right, very pranks. You remember the, the rollover guillotine that I did to start? We're going to do that from here. Okay. So there's a lot of different uh, conditional stuff that makes me go for this. Right now, you see how he's sitting his neck up off the ground and the, he doesn't have his arms anywhere near his neck. I would jump on the chin strap. Remember, it's not a guillotine, it's always a chin strap for me. But now if I choke you with a guillotine today, I, remember I'm a liar, okay? <laughs> so, uh, so this would be a conditional I go because I can see a, an angle to get under his neck. I don't need to worry about his frame. I'm going over his frame anyways. So even if he was pushing me away, I'm just going to front flip over. 
okay? Now, the other one that I like to go for from here is times I can pressure myself in that I can just force this. If I can't get an under, like if I can mash myself in and I can't get under hooks because he should be really conservative, I'm just gonna go to his neck. And then what I like about doing this one from here is I don't have to commit to my roll until after I get on his neck, whereas from most other places I have to roll and get the chin strap while I'm front roll. Okay. Now, there's two things that can happen with my hand on this. Uh, the best thing that can happen is I take my underhook as I'm going down. Okay. So it, it doesn't even have to be there because once I start to front roll, now it was there. Like I got the angle as I was going. See what I mean? But if it's just not there at all. I'm okay grabbing the back of his tricep. You can always grab the back of his tricep. It could be behind your head. It could be here in front of you. And what I want you to do is grab his face like you're about to do bad shit to him, okay? Grab his tricep, and I want you to pull both of them down into your chest and into the mat with, with actual, like, pretty decent pressure. This, this part's important, okay? You gotta understand, this grip I have right here is the only thing stopping him from turning out that way. Okay, give me some pressure that way. Yeah, if I didn't have that, we'd have a problem, okay? And now, if I was on a guillotine instead of a chin strap, I would not be able to prevent him from rotating this way. Mm. And I could follow him up, but I just had a pass. I just gave it up, okay? Now, keep in mind, if you, you do have, like, recovery options for if you fuck that up. So, like, if I didn't have enough pressure to keep him down, I would roll up with him as he came up. Which way, which way? Yeah. This is the only way you, you, you can go, because I can always guarantee this, or I can guarantee this to stop that way. Okay. So everyone turns this way. And you because I'm underneath your shoulder and underneath your neck, when I follow you, I end up on top of you. And then I can just do the old wrestling, throw them by right away before he like solidifies himself and I can get behind him. But we don't want to have that happen, so just squeeze his face. Okay, I mean, it's something, you have to make yourself do this. Have you ever had someone just like grab your face for real and squeeze you? Most men have it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, it, just, just do it today, okay? <laughs> now, this goes over, you grab, front roll, there's my tricep, and you can flop on that, too. That, I made that look semi-graceful, but it, you, could just, you could really just flop over, okay? Grab the chin, not from this point, Okay, understand, if he tries to back roll over you, that face grab, <laughs> that stopped him. That was it, okay? Tries to rotate either way, I have pressure to stop it. Now, once I feel secure, or if I'm really quick mentally, I can dig this underhook right away. You can't really stop it, because he has nowhere to hide this arm. It's easy to dig from this angle. Now, I can really keep him down, but what I'm going to do is not let my pressure up off the face and off the chin. So I'm gonna neck bridge myself up. Okay, now, if you don't have like the, the core stability to do a good neck bridge, you could just kind of like roll over, but you're gonna have a, to fight the knees a little more. Yeah, so like, if you go back down. So if we're in this position and I can't neck bridge and I just kind of turn, he's gonna start bringing his knees in and you'll have to kind of pressure through these a little bit. But that's a winnable fight, but it is better to just do the neck bridge. Okay, the neck bridge means I don't have to deal with any of that. So if I manage to get an underhook early, so in a position like this where I smashed him in, okay, I saw my underhook option there, I got it, and I floated here for a second, I could just grab this and go. Now that one, you can do. Okay, most of the time you do that with the underhook though. So th there's variations on this, but now we're talking about like gymnastics almost. So not everyone is gonna have the body stability to catch themselves in the air and redirect their pressure. But if you don't, it's okay, you just front roll, right? But as another option, remember, I'm just trying to clear his legs now. Pass his legs, I can keep myself here based on pulling myself off this. And I can pull myself back down. It's just, that's my upper body attachment now. The neck and the underhook. I could do it with just the neck, but it's harder. And if you don't, again, not, again, not everyone's going to have that stability to do that. That's okay. You're just going to flop. Just front, just fucking full center. Okay. And if you fuck it up, the only real way to fuck it up, as long as I kept the chin, is for him to turn with me. Okay. And if he turns with me, I 
and connect, or you end up in a front headlock battle. And then again, uh, you guys doing amazing, so I don't have to spend a lot of time here. But you shouldn't be on your knees here. If you're in this position, you really should be up on your toes. And you got to put your force down towards your feet. And then you can start working yourself behind them in a lot of different ways. But just don't end up in that front headlock position. Sit on your knees. Okay? That's like a jujitsu habit. I hate it. So, rolling front chin strap. I don't, I don't have a name for this shit, by the way. So, you can call it whatever you want. Questions on this? Okay. Now, before we partner up, I want to show you how this is a really cool pad. You can do these passing options from a lot of different places. Um, just so you guys see, if you're ever in a knee shield and you have an underhook still, you fuck a knee slice up, you can front roll over it into the chin strap, fucking whatever the fuck, I don't have a name. Okay? So you wonder why I say knee shields suck, there's so many shit you can do with them. But that's another option. Alright, so you learn how to do this kind of, like, take passing options that are solid, that let you finish nookie passes, you can kind of like paint them across the board wherever you can see those openings. Do you, do you worry about this arm being able to you when you pass through? You want, want a front roll or? When you came back. So this is through here. Like you finished here. Just well, let's go back to that position. I don't want it there. I have to be more particular with my pressure. Hmm. From okay. here, I don't yes. worry about it at all. Because I still have your neck, so when you try to bridge me, you're bridging me into your neck. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's just like, it, you'll stop. Okay. <laughs> or you'll keep going and I'll put you unconscious. I'm actually okay with either way. But if I wasn't on your neck there, it'd be a lot harder to hold you down. I'd have to double down in that underhook, like we talked about earlier. So yeah, no, I don't want your arm there. That's annoying. Okay, guard partners. So, um, does anyone have any questions I can answer real quick? Anyone kind of lost on any material? Or do you guys want to just start fucking rolling? Oh, yeah. All right. Okay, guys, grab some water. Uh, take like five or ten minutes. Use the bathroom. Hydrate up. And we'll just kind of. I, I think we can get away with open mat. We actually have a lot of mat space.
white button on the front.